It's Paul Allison's podcast, web blogs, wikis, and feeds. Oh my. I'm sitting up here in Inwood Park um, at the Flag of Heroes um, here in what we call the soccer field. The we meaning those of us who use this park all the time. It's September 9th, 2006. And sitting in front of me, I assume, are 2,700 flags. Uh, it's an altered American flag. Um, they blow kind of independently, sometimes together, in the slight breeze that is here today. Overcast. Sometimes the sun comes in, sometimes not. I don't know how I feel totally about this as an art object. It, uh, now, the patrioticness of using a flag is kind of upsetting in some way, yet the accomplishment of of naming so many people who passed and the experience of 9-11 in this way is still quite powerful. Uh, Like others, more affected on the fifth anniversary, uh, fifth anniversary, um, than it was on other anniversaries. I um not sure why. I uh I do remember the feeling of 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 life never being the same for my children. For others, <laughs> yet I watch the children running through this, and you can perhaps hear them playing in the background. That uh, I feel a little silly. To, uh, you know, there's so much bound up in 9/11, at least for New Yorkers, probably Americans in general. But for those of us who were, were there, we saw it. We I wasn't close. I was, you know, over in Queens, but I could see it visually down through a train yard. And I don't know. I do think it's a different experience for for some of us. I I remember most of all the the feeling afterwards that life has got to be different, that you can't get involved in uh, whether or not a kid's getting a C or a D as a teacher or petty things, like even grades at all. I mean, things had to be different. And I'm not sure I've done that. I'm not sure anybody has kind of lived up to doing things differently, taking more chances, living life to its fullest. And so some of my sadness, weirdly, has to do with with that, with uh, never quite living up to the uh, momentous experience of 9-11. They're really changing much in some way. These kids are racing through right now. So cute. Uh, not exactly a uh, memorial space, then, is it? It's okay, though. This is a uh, land where, for the last seven years my children have played baseball they've learned so much on this land right here and on the ball fields nearby as well where my son is playing right now 
I don't know where to go with all this. I just wanted to report it, look at it, talk about it a bit. 9-11 fills most of us with such feelings of loss, sadness, commitment to a new future, yet also it makes us angry. Uh, angry at not only the Bin Ladens and people who hate Americans and but also at the American government for how they've taken our grief and our pain and 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 turned it into grief and pain for others. How they've taken it and and used it for their own ends. You know, I assume there will be as many Americans killed in Iraq because of this war as there were killed at the trade centers in Washington and Shanksville, Pennsylvania on 9-11. And in July, just the one month of July, as many Iraqis were killed as Americans were killed in 9-11. So it has to be seen in perspective, too. The, the loss, the pain has to be understood that my government does the same thing to individuals elsewhere in the world. So what do you do in a school situation? It's Monday, 9-11. You know, school continues as usual. Uh, there's no special um, moment. I, you know, I, I, I want school to stop. I want to stop. I want to tell stories. I want to think. I want to be. Just be human and recommit to doing things differently. I've tried in various places to begin dialogues around 9-11 and people don't want to talk about it. I, You know, I understand. Uh, how am I any different than any other people exploiting this story when I ask students to tell their stories? Still, I, I want to give them that option. I want, I, want, I want students to be able to say what this meant to them and, and begin by telling their story and then move toward how 9-11 impacts them now. What kind of goals What can they recommit to? Oh, what do they want to change? And how can they make changes in their own lives? And I mean small things, as small as... Uh, and be more polite on the subway. And people, New Yorkers uh, were dumbfounded, and, but also kind of clear about not cursing you out if you stepped on their foot, you know, because uh, there's uh, something else more important. At least for a while after 9 11. I want to hold on to that. That, that. that feels really important. That's what I learned from biking and, and uh, mainly biking. And never getting pissed off at a driver. Never. You get cut off, but, you know, you just keep going. You keep focused. It may sound like a trivial example, but it is from those trivial kind of everyday interactions to bigger ones. Like, I'm a teacher of technology, and it, because I can't do it, you know, the old ways anymore. I, I, I need to be, I, I need to be on the edge of of what's possible. And 9/11 pushed me to make that decision, and that's why I've been doing that for the past five years. 
so how I can be a better teacher? How can I become a better teacher? That's what 9-11 means to me. That's what I want to do. And that's what I want to think about between now and Monday. And that's what I want to ask students to think about as well. What what can happen in their lives because of 9-11? So you can imagine, perhaps, the conversation we did have on the 10th grade team, which I'm on, the advisory teachers talking about what kind of advisory are we going to have on 9-11. And what we decided to do was ask students to indeed tell their stories or if they don't want to tell the story, say why they don't want to tell the stories and to write these and to to read and talk and and then to say, all right, what what changes because of this? What positive changes can you can you describe, can you think about in your own life? And what's your hope for the world now? And we're gonna give them strips of of uh, fabric to write on to describe um, their hope, their change for the world. And we're going to fly these as a commitment over the next semester together. And, uh, you know, I don't know if that's exploiting the event. I don't know if it's wallowing it. I don't know what it is. It, it just feels right, and I just wish we had more time for it. I wish more of the day at school were dedicated to to really being just people, not teachers, students, grades, you know, all the other stuff. Just people. Thinking about this event in our lives and what it means. So those are some of my reflections as I sit here at a field, a large field. Again, we call it the soccer field. There are probably uh, two or three baseball fields and one really big soccer field here. And it's been taken over by 2,700 flags. be interested to see what it looks like at night. Right now it's about 3.34 o'clock. And, uh, again, it's Saturday, September 9th, 2006. This is Paul Allison. You can uh, email me at A-L-L-I-S-O-N-P-R at gmail.com. And you can find this podcast, Weblogs, Wikis, and Feeds, oh my, on iTunes. Uh, also, if you go to Teachers Teaching Teachers, you can uh, listen to it right there uh, in the margins on the right side of the opening page, Teachers Teaching Teachers dot org. All right, so I'll talk to you soon. Bye now.